Hey everybody, my name is Alex. In this video, I'm going to cover my Space Mesh 1 to N setup. I have created a lot of guides for Space Mesh, and as my Space Mesh setup has evolved, it's become more and more complicated to make videos because I'm trying to make them relatable and easily digestible and understandable. But my setup is constantly changing, it's constantly getting complex and then simplified and I'm moving you know my hardware around so it's kind of hard for me sometimes to make guides and that's where I've been struggling with uh, making one that I think is useful I've made like four of them and I've decided not to post them just because it doesn't seem it seems like I might mislead people or complicate people's setups uh, more than they need to be and everybody's kind of, there's some people that are merging, you know, from a, a remote one-to-one. -one. There's some people merging from a, uh, a supervised setup where they have the post data directly connected to their node and they're not using post service. And then, you know, there's just so many different scenarios. It's really hard to make a guide that's not going to just be really, really long or really, really complicated. And ultimately what I'm going to end up doing is probably just an ultimate smasher guide of how to do it from the beginning. And then I might, I, I did have sort of a conversion guide, but I'll probably have a separate conversion guide for those. Uh, I think a lot of people have already converted. It's really not that difficult. It's just hard to kind of put into a guide, I suppose. Um, but anyways, what I want to do with this video is just go over my setup because a lot has changed and I want to just kind of get on the same page with everybody. Um, and along with that, I... All right, sorry for the, for the long, awkward silence. Uh, if you've been on this video or this uh, channel long enough, you know my mic just likes to turn off halfway through my videos, and I don't want to do any sort of post-production for just cutting out that short second. So uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, but here is basically going to be my article for my one-to-end setup. Basically, I have, I'm down to just two servers. I have a Delta and an Echo server. And originally, they had hard drives attached directly to them. Uh, we're going to get into what, how I have it set up now. Um, but how it worked with one to n or one to one was you'd have a node for every single hard drive, every single set of post data. With one to n, you're just going to have one node, and then you're going to have now you have post services. And if you weren't running remote post earlier, then you wouldn't know, or you, you probably weren't using post service. You might know what it is. Uh, but basically for every set of post data, you have a post service running. And before, even though uh, you could do remote posts, you still had to have a node for each post service. Now it's just down to a single node. The caveat being is that you have to have a node running for each POET server group that you're connecting to. So I run both Team24 early and late, so I have to still run two nodes. So it's really two to N for me. I have to have two nodes. And then I could connect as many sets of post data as I want. So here is what my actual setup looks like. Sorry for the squiggly lines. I couldn't get it to be just straight like this one. I don't know what was going on. Um, but I have two nodes running. An er team 24 early, Team 24 late. And that's per server. So one on Delta, one on Echo. And... I have a post service running for every hard drive that I have. And I actually have a disk shelf now with uh, a NetApp one, like the DS4246, something like that. The common one that everybody gets for like Chia and all that stuff. Um, you have to be careful with these because depending on the amount of space, the throughput is potentially not enough. Um, they make like 12 gigabit per second ones and 6 gigabit per second ones. And you got to make sure you get one with enough bandwidth that is going to allow you to prove all of the data. Uh, so just be careful if you do something like a disk shelf that you may need to not run as much space as you planned. Um, like you're not going to get away with running like 500 terabytes on this. Uh, you're just not going to read all the data in time most likely. Uh, so do a little bit of research if you try to do something like that. Uh, but 
And I, I, you know, I think I'm going to do a video on the disk itself. I did some math to make sure that it would work for me, and I'll maybe do a video to kind of describe it. Uh, hopefully my math is right. Uh, but anyways, I have all my hard drives in a NetApp, and what this allows me to do is I can shut off my post services, and I can sh actually turn off my NetApp so my hard drives aren't even powered on for, um, well, I technically have half these hard drives on early, half on late. They're split 60-40, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, the reason why I... Uh, so I, I can't actually shut it off for like 14 days and only have it up turned or 13 days and have it turned on one day. I will have to turn this NetApp on for 24 hours twice every two weeks, so once a week basically. And other than that, you know, I save a lot of power just because I don't have to have this on. Now I do have to remember to turn the NetApp on. If I don't, then I'm just going to miss the cycle gap, which is not great. But while this is shut off, my two nodes are still working. And what's great also about two nodes is that you don't have to run, you know, so many nodes that you need to run private and public. I just have these two nodes as public. And then I have the exact duplicate setup on Echo as well. So this is my current setup. Um, in the document, I have, you know, some things to consider. So because you only have two nodes, you only have two configs, which means you can only set one Coinbase per node. And you can also only set one set of Poet servers per node, which is why you need two nodes if you're going to run on two Poet services. And if you were going to run on like the default 12-hour cycle gap as well, you'd need three nodes. Uh, luckily, I've just gotten off that completely because it's such a mess. Uh, let's see, anything else I'm missing here? Not really. Uh, there's no config for the Poet services. It's all done through command lines. It's all pretty straightforward. So let me jump into Termius. And I'm inside Delta. And if I do LS BLK, we can see how I have my drives set up. So how I do this is um, I have each drive set up. So 0, 1. So it's basically my first set of drives. And this is the early and this is the late. So second set of drive or second drive basically early, late, third drive, early, late. So it's just a common pattern. I don't have 41 drives. I just it's kind of how I labeled it. And I did it 60-40. So the fastest portion is on the 60% and the slowest portion is on the 40%. Uh, I did this mainly because I already had some large post data files, like nearly 10 terabytes, and I didn't want to cut them up too much. Like if I were to do 50-50, I would have lost a couple. I'd have to shave basically the post data on a lot of my different nodes, which I, I didn't really want to do. Uh, but yeah, this is basically what it looks like. And my, my folder structure, let's see. Um, so I just have space mesh here. And then, um, actually, I can, what is notes? Uh, so anyways, I have two folders set up, one for early, one for late. So if I do ls-l early, we can see I have just a node data and one config. Uh, And then my config's pretty simple. I just have the data folder, which goes to slash no data. That's relative to the Docker container. And I'm mounting uh, my, my early Team24 folder to slash node. So that's where my node data folder is going to be. Metrics ports 10,001. These are the Poet servers for early. Uh, it's really simple. And then this is actually, I'm going to update I actually changed some things around uh, for this, so don't necessarily copy this. But right now I'm using the proof of work flags of 14, and then my Coinbase is in here, and then start sm or smashing start should be false. Everything else you can set up pretty much the same. I do 91, 92. I use basically 91 for my early, and then if I do nano late, I have the different set of poet servers here, and I do 92 for my late and 91 for my early 
So that way I can forward these ports if I need to inside of Docker or Portainer basically, but yeah, Docker basically. And that's really it for my setup. Um, and then, yeah, all my post data is basically, so you, as you notice in the config, you don't point to your post data at all. Let's go into Docker and we have echo and Delta and I have four stacks. So I have a stack for my early post service, a stack for my late post service, and then my nodes. And these are, um, these are my early and late nodes. So we can go in here and check the nodes. Uh, those are just running. And then if I go into like the early post service, we can see I've got a few of these post services running and they are connected to the hard drive. And if we look at the editor for these, so all I'm doing is connecting it. So you can see node 011. So it's connecting to hard drive one and one is the early partition. So it's part of the early post services. And you'll notice that for the early post services, they all end in one. That's a good way for me to like keep them organized. And then for the late post services, they all end in two. So that way I know for sure when I'm setting these up that I'm connecting them to the right poet server. Um, and again, everything is done in the command. So I'm actually pointing the dash dash dir to post data, which I've uh, bind mounted with my volume here to node one one. I'm doing six nonces or 208 nonces, six threads for each of these. You can see it's connecting. So this address is going to be the address of the node. So if I go back to stacks and I see my early node, it's 172.18.101. And if we go into here, 172.18.101 and then 91.94 would be for early. Um, and then 92, 94 would be for late. So everything kind of is like obvious when you're looking at this, uh, just because of how the naming conventions go, it's very easy to not mess it up. And then this is uh, operator address. So there's now an endpoint that you can query for the state of the post service. Setting it to 0.0.0.0, .0, allows me to query it from just anywhere. So if I go use port 50,000 and I basically, put the IP address of this, uh, like 172.18.2, then I will be able to get information about the post service. And I'll have a whole video in the future about the different queries that you can do. Uh, I would definitely recommend something like SM Monitor, which already kind of like uses these queries and you can monitor your nodes through that. I'm pretty sure it works for one to N. Uh, it's looking fancier and fancier. So if you were a NodeMon user um, and you want something similar, you can go ahead and use SM monitor. It's getting pretty good. Uh, so, uh, and then, okay, so for, let's go back to stacks, nodes. The nodes are very similar. Um, we're just, again, doing a bind mount for that early team 24, and we're just bind mounting it to slash node. Then we specify the config and everything else is in the config. I like to put as little as possible in the Docker. And then you can see I'm, exposing these ports so that uh, you definitely need to expose 9194 so that your post services can connect to it and that's really it i mean it's not too complicated uh, i think i'm going to set up another github repo where i'll put the stack files i'll put the configs uh, everything you would need inside there but i'm kind of waiting for like the ultimate smasher guide to do that but if you need uh, one of the configs or you want to you know one of the stack files just reach me on discord and i will uh, send it over to you uh all right so that is my setup you can check out the guide if you want any more information and hopefully this is helpful i am working on an ultimate smasher guide for one to n i'm working on lots of guides on how to monitor your one to n manually you know you can always use sm monitor but it's also good to be able to just query them really quick if you want to see if something's wrong but overall it is a huge improvement i like the direction things are going 
If we could just fix the whole pool problem, I think Space Mesh would be in good shape, but that's a that's a tough cookie to crack. So we'll see where it goes from here. And hopefully everybody has a good time smashing. I will talk to you later.